And today, thank you, Patrick, for that weather update at Dying 38. Looking uh, really, really nice with a lot of sunshine around the uh, around the Tennessee Valley. 71, finally. We got above, uh, they are got up into the 70s right now after a really, really nice morning. 66% humidity. If you've been outside, you know all about that here this morning. Our newsmaker segment coming up now here on k -Wayne Today at 38 minutes after the hour. We welcome uh, Dade County Executive Tim Rumley in the uh, in the uh, studio with us here on this uh, Thursday. Good morning, sir. How good morning. Good morning. Great. Well, it feels uh, good outside. Yeah, really oh, feels, it, it yeah. certainly does. Yeah. And uh, congratulations, by the way, on uh, uh, getting uh, the nod uh, to uh, uh, be the executive for the next four years. Thank you. Thank you. It's just uh, been a long, uh, long political, uh, I guess you'd call it trail or whatever. Started early, you know, but I just appreciate everyone that got out and voted, you know, uh, appreciate the people that voted for me and support me and appreciate their confidence in me, you know, but, uh, and I do appreciate people that, you know, actually um, got out and, and passed the splash, whether you voted for me or not, that was a, that was a big vote right there, that plus, and I can say that now because it really is so critical to us and so it's a, it's such a critical too for your governing authority, regardless of who's in office, to have, to keep your property taxes down, you know, and it's just, uh, and a lot of people, they, you know, back when they, was, people were talking, they said, well, you're threatening us with a tax increase and all that. No, that was not, a, that's not threatening. All you got to do is do your math, you know. I mean, and, you know, you do, you, you would have had to cut everything that we possibly could and then come back, you know. And so, anyway, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's over with for another, well, it's lost five years. And, but I just appreciate everyone because we did have a really good turnout. It was really, really great, you know, and uh, just, just appreciate everyone. It's just a good place to live, you know, good place to, Dade County, you know. You know, I don't know, uh, and this getting just a little bit off su subject, and mm. I don't know if you even know the answer to this question, but I, I think we had the uh, extra turnout because we were also going through a presidential preference primary that had been postponed. But I, I don't know if the uh, if there's guidelines like for the uh, Republican and the Democratic parties. I know it would save on an election if if we did it all together every every time. Mm. You would think they would, that you know, maybe this might be a lesson or, you know, maybe uh, a test or whatever that, you know, because it really, uh, it worked, you know, it worked real well, you know, I mean, I haven't had any complaints and it, it did, it did pull a lot of people out that I think normally would, well, let me fix this off here a minute, sorry, um, but, uh, you know, it's something that, uh, that I think that will be looked at in the near in the future, in the future yeah, elections. Like yeah. I said, I don't know if it's feasible, I don't know if, uh, yeah. you know, uh, you know anything about that but I do know that the presidential preference primary normally turns out a good number of yeah. voters yeah. and I'm sure with the uh, the fact that it was both that and the Democrat and Republican Party we had a uh, a uh, person on uh, on Facebook ask us a question uh, and it is uh, and I guess it uh, it's one of those that get asked a lot I know Lawana said you know all the time folks want to know well, they uh, they voted they voted a uh, a Democratic uh, yes on the presidential I believe, and they wanted to know why their other local races wasn't on their ballot. That's right. That's well, right. obviously, when you vote on the Democratic primary, everybody on the local races was on the Republican. And no, you didn't so, really have anyone locally to right. vote for at all. I had I had several people ask me, you know, that would, but once you checked it, once you once you plugged that in, it was done. Well, there wasn't there wasn't any backing up, you know. Once you got that and you answered that and you got your card and started, it was not you couldn't back up, you know. Well, so. well, you know, and one of the things, and, and we've discussed this several times here on the program. I know Kerry and I have, uh, is the fact that election day this past Tuesday was a primary for the Democratic Party mm -hmm. and true. a primary for the Republican Party that just so happened was on the same That's day. True. So That's yes, true. you do have to go in. And tell them because they're two different ballots. That's right. You mm -hmm. know, and that's why they they post all the ballots on the wall on that you can read before you ever go inside mm -hmm. and know what you're going to be voting on. So, but any, anyway, uh, we've got, I guess, after the election and everything, we're we're ready to start paving and summertime's here. Well, we've been moving on right along anyway, but you know, the COVID, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of really hurt us. You know, as far as some of the. Uh, uh, the do's and don'ts in county government. You know, we've got just like look out Lake Dam, you know, out there. We'll, we are going to start our paving, you know, here real soon. We're getting everything fired up, getting ready to go. 
but the lookout laid down, you know, we've got to get on that too. We've got a timeline. They, I hope they extend that uh, for us to begin. You know, we had like six months from a while back, but and, and I think they'll work with it. But our hold up on that has not been the construction part, but been the engineering part because Stantec, which is uh, actually going to be the, uh, or, or is the engineer, the drawing, uh, they um, were on a um, stay at home thing. I mean, they, uh, they were not even coming into their offices and much less doing field visits. So now, from what I understand last week, after this this next week, they'll be um, they'll be actually I thought I cut that off, but it in. Um, they'll be actually back, you know, uh, working and all, so we can go ahead and get this thing scheduled and get started. Because we were ready to go back when this started. We were actually going to start the week after when when actually the governor came in with an order, you know, on this dam out there, and. Uh, because it's something that's been going on there for 15 years and we just haven't got to the head of getting this thing taken care of and got all the plans and the state on board. So anyway, that's something that'll be in the near future. We'll be talking about a lot about it once we do that. And that's out, uh, out there on Lookout Mountain there at the, uh, the Moore Lake, out there going across. And uh, better paving, uh, like I said, we've got several roads. You know, we've got, uh, we want to get on here and get it done before fall. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll give you a list of those roads next week when we come in of where we're actually going to be starting, you know. Uh, why don't Gap County Road Six? Uh, will that be done this summer? Well, it'll be the Wide Oak Gap County Road Six is something we got to do. We got right. we've I mean, got to get this. We got to get this lake project, um, uh, you know, started. And, and it's not going to take that long to do that out there. We but but that we're under an order from the state to do that. Right. We got to do it. And if we even we have to patch Wide Oak one more time, but that will be taken care of before winter, before the end of summer. Uh, we've got to get that out there, and of course that'll be that road will be closed down for a while uh, once we open that up and dig that out. Because we've got to do a retainer wall, just like we did up on the upper end of it. We're going to bring a retainer wall all the way down through there, and we'll fix it permanently, just like the other part is, you know. So, uh, so that's. Uh, but we don't have enough manpower, you know. We 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 try to, and we do this because we we do so. We don't have enough, a, a big enough crew to put two crews at two different places, you know. Is what, what I'm saying. So, uh, but we want we want to knock this out. And probably when we get involved in the dam and we get going and see everything's going smooth out there, we'll pull off and probably go ahead and at least start the excavation out there off the side of that mountain for that wall, you know. So they'll be, I'd say both of them will be going, um, you know, at the end anyway, both of them will be going at the same time. Yeah. The uh, budget process is always, uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's uh, strange. It takes, I mean, there's a lot of departments in the county, and of course, uh, with, uh, with the uh, uh, county clerk being out on medical mm -hmm. leave, with yeah. his uh, wife is, is, you know, is definitely not made it any easier for y'all to, to go through. But it, it, but we are going through the process. Well, we yeah, we got we got a really I feel really good about our budget. Uh, we have our, all of our, uh, our people work with us on it. The sheriff and uh, Joe Chambers of the jail and uh, you know all of our all of our constitutional officers, you know, judges and all. And we've got we I feel I've got a, we've got a, the budget put together here. Uh, We'll have a public hearing on at five o'clock, and we've got a. Yeah, what, what day is that? The, the public hearing today. Okay, I thought it no, was. No, I said today at five right. o'clock. Yeah. Today and at then, five uh, then uh, exactly a week later, we will have uh, the meeting to pass it. You know, and and I feel really good about it. Our, our public people will be there tonight mm -hmm. or this evening. The sheriff, as always, this is a thing you go through every year. You know, by law, and uh, if there's any questions, you know, you can talk to them head one on one. You know, about their line out on their budget, but. Uh, they've really, they've really done a, a really good job. Yeah. There's about uh, a. That's on our website too. Oh, okay. Just look yeah. at it. Rebecca Jones gave it to us, and it's there. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's actually posted on our website. A copy of the, the latest, you know, budget. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's an increase, uh, you know, just around numbers around what six or seven hundred thousand dollars from last year. Yes. What primarily uh, is the increase from? That's it's mainly uh, from our. Uh, uh, from our jail, you know, from our jails and from our sheriff's department, you know, from public safety. And just overall, we our insurance went up, you know, okay, not much. That, it's about I 3%. Heard about, I heard that yeah, it was, you know, we, we fought with them, them, fought with them. It was, it was like it, but uh, they were, we were going to hit about a 20%, 22% increase. And we got that all the way down to roughly right, a, right about a 3%, you know, increase. So things like that. Mainly, I guess you would call it in our lives, you know, where it's cost of living. You know, just it's kind of, you know, it's moved up on us, you know. And, uh, but, uh, but in a county our size and all, that's not really it's not really bad at all, you know. I mean, and, uh, and that because uh, that's that's why I say. I mean, we've been at this. We have been in the years past at this at this phase in the budget. 
where we had maybe a shortfall of upward of a half a million dollars, and we were scrambling trying to cut and do this and do that. You know, I mean, I'm talking about back, you know, several years ago, and so that's why, you know, we, we when you said, you know, this is a critical time of the year, it is. But what actually, when you start your budget process, is almost the two months after we pass the budget. You know, you really start looking, you start watching, you start putting figures together, and you watch that process all wet. That way you're not cramming it at the last month or so at the end of the time to do your budget. And so, um, and, and we've, all of our constitutional officers and our elected officials and our, our, especially our department heads, they know that, and they really are tight with the money. I mean, it's just, it just amazes me, you know, I mean, they, we've got some really people uh, out there working for the county uh, that uh, are really tight with our money, you know. Uh, Oh, you call it conservative, I guess that's the word you use today, but when I was growing up, that's, that's the word we use, you know. So, and that's what it takes to keep your taxes down in your county. If you think taxes are high here, go go check around some of the parts of Georgia, you know, and look, we're, we're up in the top ten of the lowest, actually probably the top five of the lowest millage rates in the state of Georgia. And, you know, you can look and see what we get for it. We, we, we do, we really get, we got a lot for what we pay for, you know. So. I think, uh, of course, we don't have time to get into that, but... Uh, a lot of people during this uh, election and uh, budgetary time and whether the SWAS was going to pass, as far as a lot of people don't realize there's a lot of services that y'all provide that technically by law the county government does not have to. Oh, that's uh, true. Yeah. As a lot of counties, I mean, you know, you do that because out of really necessity, you might say. I mean, because you really don't have to furnish a, a for instance, uh, an ambulance service. Yeah, a lot of people. No, say they don't realize. They think they go, that's just do what? No, you no, don't that's have that. Not one no, that's required no, by no, law for no, the county and, to provide. No, no, and and actually by the uh, constitution, you don't really have to furnish the uh, sheriff deputies. You know, I know that's crazy, but you know, if you really read it, you know, by law, we're, we've got to furnish him an office. You know, we've got to furnish him a salary. And a, and a second person, you know, like his uh, uh, chief well, the, uh, or whatever. But as far as that goes, you know, it's crazy to even say that. But, I mean, if you really look at things, you know, there's a lot of things. But where in the world would you be at? You know, you got to use, you know, you, you're, you know, there's things, a library. You don't have to, you know. Now, if you, that's one thing that a city or, you know, they, that's one of the things that they have to have as far as having uh, when they go and actually. I think uh, the become, city has to have uh, three of five. Three of five things, things. and yeah. one of them's a library, you know. Right. But there, there's a lot of things that we do. You know, senior the senior uh, activities. Uh, you know, that's not something you you, you have to fund. You recreation. Know, of course, recreation zero. You know, really. I mean, so there's a lot of things, that, but but that's uh, that's something that. Uh, but all of those, uh, of course, yeah. especially the ambulance service. Uh, you know, we can't provide that for ourselves, and mm -hmm. that's that's why we fall back on government to be able to do that. And I just thought, yeah. you know, it always sparks the conversation, uh, even more so this year because of the possibility of not having a splash and things that may have to be cut that a lot of people don't realize there's certain things like an ambulance service, uh, not that you would cut it, but um, yeah. you know, you're not required by law to be able to have that. Uh, yeah. I know that uh, the governor's order will expire tomorrow for uh, yeah. the uh, elderly and those that uh, have extenuating uh, medical uh, conditions for the uh, stay, uh, stay at home That's right. order. And that, will expire tomorrow evening and uh, and I know that you've been doing the daily updates so you're going to be switching after tomorrow to a uh, once a week right we, we'll go on Thursdays you know, about three o'clock on Thursdays and and, uh, and and then we can go back if we have to I mean we don't know what this thing's going to do you know I mean it uh, we hope that it's kind of leveling off but now after looking at this morning throughout most of the states United States you know, you've got states that didn't even have a stay home order now they're boom you know they're up 60 percent so you know we, we just need to play it by ear and if we need to if we need to follow up and get back here, you know, we, we'll go seven days a week if we have to, you know, it's like we were doing. But um, but right now we feel pretty good, you know, pretty comfortable with this, and we'll just have to play it by ear. And uh, and as as you said there, you know, the tomorrow uh, is the end of it. Uh, I kind of look for him to maybe call a uh, Kerry and I was talking about yesterday, maybe call a, a conference possibly today or tomorrow, you know, and I don't know that he would extend it or not, but I'm sure I feel that he probably will call one. I say he, the governor. And, and call me and he you know do some adjusting or whatever but but like you said tomorrow is the end of that as far as uh, the stay at home and uh, that's you know that means you know your seniors and uh, and all the uh, people that you know possibly might have some type of medical condition now but that still don't mean go out and just sit out and sit out and go to the you know the, the you you still need to use precaution because you know I mean it's it's still here it's still real 
I don't, you know, just feel like you can go out and go, you know, when you go to buy groceries, try to wear your mask. You know, if you go to a funeral, go to weddings or whatever, take precaution and do social distancing, you know. As should everyone right now until this thing kind of starts, well, we can feel like it's starting to go away. Because right now it's not showing signs really of going away. I'll tell you that. I mean, so. Well, we, we probably uh, you know, are not going to be, uh, uh, you know, where we can say, well, they've got it under control until the vaccine, which they hope to by the end of the uh, end of the year. That's right. Uh, but they do have the data now that su su suggests that, and, and I think uh, I think largely from what I can gather, there is a lot more cases being uh, uh, being found, but they're doing they're doing testing a hundred times more than they were yeah. three months ago. Hundred plus more. Yeah. yeah I mean, so. The more you test, the more cases you're going to Every find. county, yeah, they're doing, they're doing it just like this, you know, five, six days a week, you know, every county in the state of Georgia. Well, throughout the whole United States, I'm sure, but, uh, and so that's that's true, you know, I mean, there's more and more, but, but what you, you know, what what you need to look at, the numbers, the testing's one thing, but look at the numbers, the real numbers, if you look at the hospitalization, the people that are really, right. truly, that's where you can really get look and either be scared or not, you know, that's in, and you know, when you start seeing those really grow, that you've got people that's sick enough to be on ventilators, that's when you really need to look at things. And, and we lost sight at the very beginning of this because uh, the stay at homes and uh, the closing of businesses and private businesses was to keep the overwhelming, uh, to overwhelm our medical uh, hospitals right. and uh, the ventilators and stuff. It was never. They, they didn't think it was ever going to stop the spread, mm -hmm. but they wanted to slow it down where our medical uh, uh, yeah. providers could uh, could handle the uh, the amount of people coming in. For and I think the governor or, or, or whoever came up with this, I would have said he say whatever. I think they're going about it right now more so than ever. By you know he's employed more and more people now to the state of Georgia to track these people, the, their their events, the daily the events before or where they've been, the people that actually truly test. You do a swab test, you come back, and you know that, and they're running the fever, they're positive. Then they've got these people. What are they call tracers? Is that what they're called? Tracers. Yeah. And Contact they'll come tracing. in. Yeah. Now, now they can't force the people to give the information, but most people, I'd say, would. You know, like if you've been to the grocery store, what grocery store? You've had, right. have you had your hair cut? You know, uh, have you been to a, an auto parts store? Have you been to a, a hardware? Have you been whatever? And that right there, right there, is going to be the biggest thing to keep this thing, one of the things, to keep it from spreading. You know, they really, if they'd done that late, earlier on, more so than the stay at home thing, really, they might have really kind of headed some of this off because, um, you know, if you've got it and you've been, you know, these people need to know or you need to go and talk to them, you know, but that's information that they don't have to give the health department, but it would be, it, would, it seems to me like it would be common, you know, common sense to do that. You know? Commissioner, uh, yeah. five o'clock for, uh, for the public hearing today. Real quickly, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, six six seven eight nine 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 area code four two three. That's my cell, and uh, six five seven four six two five. And you can call there, and I'll go online. It was curious. She's got my number and all of our commissioner's number and uh, numbers there online. And uh, just feel free to call any of us. We're, we're here to serve you. We're just you know, public servants. You know, there's most of you that know us know that. You know, twenty four seven. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner uh, Executive Ted Romney in the uh, studio with us this morning on the Newsmaker segment here on K Win Today. This portion brought to you by Romans Mobile Homes. Romans Mobile Homes, where they'll always treat you like.